Hey everyone, welcome to Manage Book Corner. I'm Amanda, and this is my review of Trespass, which is an Amazon original stories collection featuring six stories by six different authors. For this, I decided to listen to it as an audiobook. The first short story in the collection is called The Tiger Came to the Mountains by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Now, I have to admit that she is the whole reason I got this entire collection. I love Sylvia Moreno Garcia, and I've read several of her books, and I plan to read all the other ones that I haven't gotten to yet. And so she's really the reason that I was interested in this whole collection. The Tiger Came to the Mountains is set in Mexico in 1917 and it follows this young girl and her brother who have to hide away from their hometown up in the mountains in this little cave for one night just to make sure that they're safe from the ongoing war that's happening in their country. She's rather adventurous and fierce and she can do a lot of things that girls really are not expected to do, whereas her brother is more of a dreamer, a storyteller. And when they're in the cave, her brother is very ill and he has a fever and he's not really able to protect her the way that maybe her brother would like to be able to protect her. While they're there, he starts to see things and his sister thinks that he's, you know, just hallucinating because of his fever. But as it turns out, there is a tiger that's very close by to where they're staying in the cave. And so this short story is really about survival against a wild animal and how a young girl who isn't expected to be strong or brave has to overcome the odds to save herself and save her brother. Out of the six short stories, this one was my favorite. I thought it was really interesting and I felt very completely enveloped in the characters. Most of Sylvia Marina Garcia's books tend to be in the fantasy realm or the horror realm. They're usually in speculative fiction in some way. In this case, this is actually just pure historical fiction. It doesn't really have the fantasy or horror elements to it, although it is pretty thrilling and it definitely got my heart rate, rate going up a little bit. But I thought out of the six stories that this one was the one that I felt most connected with and most like I really cared about the characters and I thought it was really interesting and gripping and thrilling. I thought it was a wonderfully done short story and one that felt complete despite being so short. The second story is called Wildlife by Jeff Vandermeer. I've actually never read anything by him. This is my first foray into his writing. And in fact, actually the rest of the authors in this collection I have not read before. So for all of them, this is a first. So in Wildlife, we follow a woman named Sam who has just come out of a violent past that involves her ex-husband and someone else who was there. And she's kind of found a sanctuary in this home that her dad used to own. And while she's there, she's kind of feeling haunted by what happened in her past. And she's also feeling a little bit weird about some of her neighbors that she has where she's living. She lives right up against a ravine and there's a lot of wildlife out there and she puts up some nature cams. But over the course of the weeks and months that she lives there, she starts to feel more and more like there's something wrong with what's around her, whether it's the animals or her neighbors. I thought this story was interesting. It definitely made me think it was going in a certain direction and it didn't necessarily do what I thought it was gonna do. It went in a kind of different direction, but it definitely made me feel like she was being haunted in some way. It might've been a psychological thing or it might've been actual hauntings. It wasn't entirely clear to me and it definitely felt creepy. Although by the end of it, I was starting to feel a little bit, I was starting to feel a little bit worn out from this creepiness. I'm not really sure why. I think for me, the payoff on this one wasn't quite what I was expecting or hoping it would be. It definitely became more and more thrilling and exciting as it got closer to the end of the story. And it, got, it definitely got my heart racing and I kept wondering what was happening and what it was all gonna turn out to be. I have to admit, I don't think I actually understood the ending. Um, that might be on me, but I didn't quite get it. <laughs> but it was it was an interesting story. It was kind of quiet and and subtly haunting, but it wasn't always entirely clear what was going on. And I think maybe that was on purpose, but for me, the ending was exciting, but definitely kind of unclear. The third short story is called The Backbone of the World by Stephen Graham Jones. Now he's an author I've heard about a lot and he writes a lot of excellent horror as far as I'm aware. I haven't read any of his books yet, so I was excited to start with this short story. So in this short story, it's set on a reservation in Montana, and this woman, her husband has just been put into prison for committing a horrific crime that he, that seems very out of character for him, honestly. And meanwhile, she's still living in the trailer where they lived, and her land has become overrun with prairie dogs. I think prairie dogs sound cute, but she thinks it's a problem. I don't live in a place where there are prairie dogs, so maybe I just don't know, but she is trying to get rid of the prairie dogs that have kind of infested the land where she's living. Meanwhile, she kind of needs some extra income and so she rents out her extra trailer for a woman to live in, a woman who calls herself Frog. 
not sure where the name frog came from well she said it's because she's a swimmer but regardless it's an interesting name for a character this woman millie is trying to get rid of these prairie dogs and she's also trying to form a connection with her new tenant that is living in the other trailer but as she tries out different methods of getting rid of the prairie dogs everything from buying a ferret who is a natural predator of the prairie dog to hiring kids to shoot at them nothing is working and her relationship with this other woman named frog is very strange and frog seems like she does not agree with millie's ideas of getting rid of the prairie dogs at all so it's kind of a mystery and we're also trying to figure out what exactly happened with millie's husband who committed that crime that got him into prison and it's kind of a mystery and it starts to and it starts to kind of become more and more mm, fantastical, otherworldly. It definitely goes in a sci-fi direction, which is not what I expected. And I said that with a previous short story as well. I, this is another one where I thought it was going to go one way and it went in a completely different way. So I thought this one was very interesting. It was definitely kind of a weirder short story, I would say. I, and that might just be because I don't really read a lot of science fiction or things that have to do with, well, I don't want to say too much actually, but it's definitely in a genre that I don't read very much, so maybe that's why I thought it was kind of weird or I didn't connect with it as much as the other ones, but it was well written and definitely kind of makes you think and it definitely kept my, it definitely kept me engaged throughout the whole short story. So I would like to read more from Stephen Graham Jones in the future. The fourth short story is called Stag by Karen Russell. Now this one is probably the least animalistic of the short stories. Although it does have a sort of character who is an animal in the story. So Stag follows a middle-aged man who is divorced and he has a one-night stand with a woman and she ends up inviting him to not a wedding party but a divorce party that she was about to attend. And so he crashes this divorce party. He's never been to one and in fact I didn't know they were a thing either so I guess I'm out of the loop there. But he's at a divorce party and we're seeing his interactions with these different people who they were all at the wedding originally, and a lot of them are kind of repeating the roles that they played in the wedding, but now in the divorce. And while he's there, he also finds that there is a tortoise who was who was in the wedding, and I think in the wedding the tortoise was a ring bearer, and now the tortoise um, had kind of the opposite role, taking the rings back. So this one definitely feels the least animalistic, even though there is a tortoise in it, but it definitely has that kind of trespass sense. I mean, he is crashing this divorce party and it feels it feels more psychological and we're slowly getting to know who this guy is even though he's lying to everyone else about his identity but he also seems pretty messed up and we're trying to see what happened with his divorce what caused it and although it was kind of different tonally from the other from the other stories in this collection i actually ended up liking it pretty well i was very engaged with the characters it's all set in one evening it's one snapshot of this guy's life and i thought it was very interesting Although I will say it definitely has a vibe that's kind of similar to certain movies that have become popular in the last five or so years. Those kinds of movies that, mm, they feel like a slice of life of someone who's kind of troubled or problematic in some way. I don't really like those movies and this one does have a similar vibe to that. But strange enough, although I don't like those movies, I actually did like this short story. In any case, I thought it was interesting and I liked how psychological it was and how we were in this guy's mind and getting to know him bit by bit as the night works its way forward and he kind of works his way backward in what caused his his own divorce. The fifth short story is called A Righteous Man by Tochi Onyebuchi. Actually, I think this one is probably my second favorite out of all six of them. I really enjoyed this one. This one is set in Africa in the 1800s. It's not entirely clear exactly when in the 1800s it is and it's not entirely clear exactly where in Africa he is. He does mention being near the savanna and there are hyenas around and so that can kind of help narrow down where exactly he is but in any case this man his name is nathaniel he is a missionary and he's there in africa in this village where he's staying and his mission of course is to spread the word of god spread christianity and kind of convert these people in terms of their religious beliefs now i will say that i do not agree with missionary missions i do not I'm an atheist and so I'm not really a big fan of spreading religion and changing people's beliefs. I'm not really into that. But even so, I thought this story was very interesting. The whole story is told through his letters that he writes to his wife, Teresa. And we get to see his perspective on the people when he first arrives there. 
He describes the people, he describes the nature, and he seems very enthralled by it and very excited by it. And as time goes forward, he starts to encounter different things. He eventually falls ill and becomes very feverish, and that's when things really kick off and he starts to see things that he can't really explain. And it's not clear if these things actually have happened or if he's just seeing it because he's having a fever. Kind of like the first story that I mentioned by Silvia Moreno Garcia. But in any case, I thought it was very interesting and very powerfully written. And although it's a short story, it felt complete in some way, which I think is wonderful for such a short format. One thing that I like is that it's completely in this guy's mind and his perspective. We're, we're only getting the story through the letters that he writes. And we can only trust him so much, especially as he starts to have the sickness and the fever. And you're not sure if the way he's perceiving things is how things are actually happening. We're also seeing him go through his own uh, doubts and his own faith. And I think that's really interesting as well. And where that doubt is coming from and why he's having it how it's related to the people he's with, but also the experiences and the things he's seeing. Probably my favorite thing about this story though is the hyenas and kind of the things that this guy in his fever sees in terms of hyenas being humans or humans being hyenas. I actually, incidentally, I just read a book a couple weeks ago that had to do with shape-shifting hyenas as well. And I didn't know this was a thing, but I've seen it in two different books in the same month. And so I definitely want to see more shape-shifting hyenas in the future because that is my new favorite thing. If you know where else I can read about shape-shifting hyenas, please let me know because I would love to read more books that have that and anything else kind of like that in them. I'm all about animals and magic and changing form. Very interesting. One final thing that I'm not sure if it was intentional or not, but the entire short story is told through his letters to Teresa. But it feels completely one-sided and we never get any notion that Teresa actually responds to him. We don't know if she writes letters back to him. I'm not sure if she even exists, to be honest. I have my doubts, personally. I wasn't sure if there even was a Teresa or if he was just writing to some fictionalized person that he wishes he could write to. That's just my interpretation. Maybe there was a Teresa. Maybe she was writing letters back to him, but I wasn't entirely sure. Even so, I thought this was a very interesting story and I definitely want to read more from this author because, like, like I said, this is my second favorite out of the six that I read. The final short story is called Bloody Summer by Carmen Maria Machado. This one probably has the most interesting format of them. Like the previous one, which was also an interesting format, being how it was written with letters, this one is written kind of like it's an essay or an article in an academic journal. That's how it seemed to me. It feels like a nonfiction piece, even though it is actually a short story. Later on, we find out that, it, that the writer of this of this kind of essay or article is a little bit in the future from where we are now today. But she's writing about this very strange phenomenon that was happening in a town called Never Again, which is in Pennsylvania. And she's saying how for about a hundred years leading up to the events of it, which takes place in the 1990s, for about a hundred years prior to that, she's talking about how there are tiger sightings and how the tigers might have come to be in Pennsylvania because, of course, tigers are not native to Pennsylvania or North America at all. And she's talking about how there might have been tigers maybe through the circus and maybe tigers escaping from that, but how this particular town, there are people that have tiger sightings and how the children have certain games, like hand games, that have to do with tigers and mention tigers, and how in the 1990s, there was a group of children who didn't show up at school and they all disappeared. And meanwhile, some tigers got loose and this man who did actually have tigers there ended up dead, mauled by his own tigers. And so it's interesting how the writer of, these, of this article talks about these different events and starts to make different connections with how these, how these events came to be and where these stories came from. But then she also interviews this man who was around when, when all of this happened. He might be the only survivor of the attacks where none of the children survived. And so it's very interesting how it's written and it feels very real. And as it worked its way forward, it became more and more engrossing. And I started to wish that there could be even more to the story than it was. So I thought this was very interesting. I love how it has to do with children and tigers and kind of these mythological things, things that may or may not have been real that turn into folklore or legends and whether there's any actuality in the roots of these stories. So I thought this was interesting. I definitely think this one could have been a longer story actually. I would definitely keep reading. So this this probably rounds out my, my trilogy for my top three favorites in this short story collection. 
Overall, I really did enjoy the short story collection. The tagline is take a walk on the wild side. And I definitely think that when I first saw it, I thought it'd be more completely about animals. And there were animals in here, of course, but I thought it'd be a lot more animalistic, a little bit more wild, more enveloped in being in animals' territories and in interacting with them. So I thought it'd be a little bit more like that, but instead it kind of felt like more the conflict between humans and animals. And it kept it mostly on human territory. And although I guess there could be a reason for that because humans have taken over almost all land that used to belong to animals. So that's, so maybe that was on purpose because it's kind of an important thing to, to keep in mind. The other thing is that it is called trespass and it really, and each of the stories really does kind of get at someone trespassing on someone else's land or territory. In fact, it's actually often the humans who are doing the trespassing. So I guess I just answered my own question about the previous thing I just said. But you can see how people are trespassing in terms of trashing parties. You can see how they're trespassing on different humans' settlements and trying to impose their religious views when maybe they shouldn't be doing that. And they're definitely trespassing on what should be animals' land. And, and it's no wonder when humans and animals have conflict with each other because we're encroaching on their territory and that doesn't leave them much space to go live away from humans. Very thought-provoking. So the stories in this collection do kind of range in style and genre, and they definitely range in the types of animals that they feature, the types of characters that they feature, and even when the story is set. So I think it's definitely a thought-provoking and interesting collection of short stories. I liked it. I didn't completely love it. I'd probably give it four stars out of five. But I will say that five of the authors I've never read before, and I definitely want to go and read some more, more books by these authors because I think their writing is definitely interesting, and I'm intrigued to see what else they have. So I hope you enjoyed this book review video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. And to make sure you don't miss any more of my videos, please ring the bell to get all my notifications. I put out about two to three book review videos like this one every week, as well as one to do other videos like listicles and vlogs. So thanks for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!